Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne again. I'm taking a look at Evernote. Uh, Evernote was a tool that I used uh, for a really, really long time. Evernote was one of those tools that I would say for a couple of years, you know, everybody kept saying, oh, you need to use Evernote. It's this incredible platform. It's an incredible tool. Um, it'll definitely help you in your work. Uh, it took me a couple of years to figure out how to use it. Then I finally figured out a system and, and got hooked on Evernote. I would use Evernote for, I would say, a good five, six years. Um, I would go to conferences and present uh, and show people how to use Evernote. I have a bunch of blog posts out there talking about Evernote. And then I would say about two years ago, I stopped using Evernote. Uh, I'm trying to wean myself from Evernote, uh, mainly because... Um, they changed their pricing model. I paid for Evernote Premium. Um, they changed their pricing model. I, I didn't like what they were doing with that. Um, and then more and more news came out about how, um, you know, they were, I had privacy and security concerns with Evernote. Um, and then also the main reason was I started to think about how I was basically locked into their silo. Um, and some of the tools that I used, um, you know, or always, you know, certain things wouldn't work. And then all my information was stuck in the silo and, and I didn't feel like the search was working well. So gradually I decided to start to wean myself off of Evernote and try out different tools. Um, that has caused a transition to Google Keep and Google Docs, um, for my writing process, which I, I enjoy. I, it's working well for me. Um, yes, I still do have concerns about being stuck now in a Google silo, um, as opposed to Evernote, but that's another video for another day. So I want to talk about how I set up Evernote, um, and and for the most part, I wanted you to focus on uh, the process involved here. The process is the important thing, not the actual tool. Um, so that's one of the major things to to think about. So if I search for Evernote, I'll come across you know the the main site at Evernote.com. Um, I can also uh, see that they have Android apps. So this is your Android tablet and your Android devices, your phones. Uh, there is a uh, an Apple app, an iOS app, so you can put this thing on your iPhone, your iPad, um, and so there's different ways, you know. And then I also have the Mac app. Um, one of the things to keep in mind is that Evernote is free for up to two devices. So when you first get started, one of the things I recommend is sign up for Evernote get the plan stick with the free plan until you decide that this is for you like i said before i i subscribed for the premium version of evernote for a while um once you decide that it's for you you can pay for uh the the premium version basically you're just getting um you know extra devices and stuff like that a couple a couple other things a little bit more functionality but sign in create an account and you know si add it to your devices minimally um you know add it to your your phone you know your your daily driver for your phone and maybe your computer or uh your uh you know uh a tablet um so i'm already signed into evernote and what i'll see is let's see if i can get to the main page without it showing as signed in so i'm at the main page here um, you know, I, I'm already signed in on another page, but it's basically I can sign up for free with a Google account, my Gmail address. Um, so I'm signed in. They talk about how to use it for free and stuff like that. Um, and Evernote works for me because I view it as my, uh, like my multimodal brain. I view it as a digital brain. Um, one of the teachers in a session said that it was like a, a trapper keeper where I would like stuff everything and not worry about it until later. Um, but the reason why Evernote works for me or this process works for me is throughout the day I'm busy. And, you know, as many of you are, I'm, I'm busy and, and I can't always remember everything that I would like to remember. So it's helpful for me as I see things that are of interest or I want to check out, I sort of quickly have a, a process to save it and I know that I'm going to go back to it later um, or I know that I might want to go back to it later but right now I don't have the headspace to think about it so I basically save it quickly and get it off my desk and I don't worry about it so let me show you the process involved so as I, as I sign into Evernote 
they have a, a web version. The web version works really well. Um, you know, it, it will it will save notes. It exists in the in the browser. I believe the web version is you know free, um, but for the most part, as you get started, I feel like it's easier to edit and set things up on the desktop. Um, so the web version is there for you. Um, you know, you can by all means use it, but I feel like the desktop version is much easier to get things organized. So if you're in Evernote and you're signed into the web version. I'm already signed in here. If I go to uh, download Evernote for Mac, or it'll say download Evernote for PC, you can download uh, the application for it, install it, sign in. And so what's happening here is your Evernote, you're basically taking notes or you're saving content. Um, and the, con the content can be a lot of different things. You can, you know, really expand that. That's one of the, the initial bright spots of Evernote, but it's also one of the reasons why I think it's sort of got clunky and a little bit too much. Um, and a lot of people didn't like it because Evernote could do everything under the sun. Um, so with Evernote, you're saving notes, you're saving them in a place that follows you wherever you go. So it's, it's that ubiquitous access to your data, meaning you can get your data anytime, anywhere, any place. But then it's also, uh, for the most part, device agnostic. So that means that it doesn't matter if I'm on my Mac or PC, it doesn't matter if I'm on a Chromebook or an iPad or an Android phone, I can get to my data um, quickly and easily. Um, so when I first start with Evernote, um, there's, there's basically different ways they organize things. They have notes and notebooks. So to get started, my process is I have two notebooks. Um, I keep it simple. I know there's a lot of people that have like these crazy nested notebooks um, and they have notebooks set up, you know, for specific areas of their life. So I see that there's people that say, okay, I want, you know, a notebook that's called at school. And so they'll say, okay, this is a private, uh, I know that they have the shared notebooks and, and, and this is early in the video to talk about this, but, you know, please notice that they have a shared notebook and you have to share it with an individual person. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to leave, or I did leave Evernote, is because I wanted to be able to share a notebook as a public notebook. And so I could link to it on my website, and anybody can go review my notes that I had there. Um, this doesn't work for me, just being able to share notes, a, a notebook with, an, with individual people. That doesn't work for me. So... I digress. <laughs> so with the notebook, some people have like at school and then they have a new notebook for like at work, you know, and then they'll have like at personal. And within those notebooks, they'll have like sub notebooks. Um, that's too much for me. That was too confusing for me. So the, the way to keep it simple for me is I have an inbox and an archive. The inbox is basically every note that I create, the it goes to the inbox. Um, my dog is behind me scratching. Um, so the, the inbox is where every single note goes. So whatever I create, and we'll talk about the notes and what you create, but whatever I create first goes to the inbox. And the inbox for me has to stay clean. Um, and what that means is I'll basically throughout my day, I'll share three, four, five, six notes to the inbox. Um, and then over the course of the week, I'll have like, you know, anywhere between like 30 and 50 notes. And then what I do is I set a I set aside time once a week to sit and basically process notes. Then what I do is I have an archive. And the archive is basically like the storage of all of my notes. So as I see a note, I create, as I see something I want to save, I'll save it to my inbox. Then once I process it, I'll move it over to the archive. So let's take a look at what all this means. So the first way that I started really getting hooked on Evernote was to save websites and bookmark websites. Um, I was that person that in, you know, your browser of choice, you would have like 20, 30, 100 
bookmarks all nested within each other and then you get to the point where you can't remember what you have saved um, and I realized that was problematic also I'm a researcher of online spaces I constantly am reading things online and I want to be able to save things as I read them online um, and make sure they are accessible later and a bookmark doesn't really help because the bookmark the website might go up down the website might change I want to make sure I really have a snapshot of that website so the first way that I really got hooked on Evernote and and used it as a tool was bookmarks that was the gateway for me so the Evernote web clipper right now um, you know I, I have it added to Chrome this has changed names over the years this has been called clearly and then there's been other versions but for the most part you know you're looking for that web clipper and this is in Chrome there's a Firefox version as well and so what will happen is you know let's say I'm reading online and I want to save this page um, you know and the challenge is sometimes there's a lot of ads on the page as somebody that studies and researches you know online reading comprehension and critical evaluation there's times that I want to save all of these ads because I want to to show students a snapshot of a page and sort of break down um, you know what's happening here so if I want to bookmark this page what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on let me show you the top of this so I'm gonna click on the extension which is this button right here And if I click on that extension, what it's going to do is it's going to give me this little pop-up. So in essence, what it's doing is it's a, a screen capture tool. So I can select to grab the just the article itself. You can see that it's basically selecting just the image and the text. I can get a simplified article. So what it's doing is it's basically taking the text and the image and stripping everything else out. Um, and making it like a read it later source I can grab the full page which traditionally this is what I wanted I wanted the full page all the time yes it's extra stuff but for my purposes that's what I needed I, I wanted all the extra stuff that was in there um, I could save it just as a bookmark so that's you know just the same thing you'd have in your browser or if I wanted to I could just grab a screenshot um, and, and have it that way so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the article actually let's grab the full page for purposes of argument I can also say where I want to save this I'm going to save this to my inbox because as I suggested before um, this is something that um, you know I, I want to be able to process my content as I add it in so the other thing that was nice for me about Evernote is the tagging system um, so there is a difference between tags and categories and we have tags and categories in our websites and in other spaces online for me there's Evernote's all about notes notebooks and tags so a tag is just a, a, a general descriptor for the information you can think almost like a, a hashtag in a tweet or a hashtag in a discussion or a paper but it's basically generally what's this all about so I could say this you know page is all about sneezes um, and this page is Lifehacker. So you can see I have other stuff from Lifehacker. So I'm going to add it like that. And if I want to, I can add a remark or a comment. I generally do not here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Save. And I'm going to save this uh, clip. So it's going to grab that content, save it, upload it to Evernote. And it's going to save it in my Evernote notebook. And once again, if I'm signed in online, it's basically saving it there as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the, the desktop app. So now, gradually what will happen is that note will come over to my inbox. So if I go into my inbox, I also have other opportunities to create content. So one of the things that we'll see is right now there's nothing in here what I can do is I can create while we're waiting for that note to come over I can create a all right so it's still coming over I can create a new note in my inbox so if I create a new note the way Evernote is set up and I sort of like this is I'll have cards over here for the different notes that I have my note will show up over here um, if I want to 
And this pretty much mimics what you'll see on the web app as well. If I wanted to, I can double click on this and I can open up the note itself as a card. So if I'm in here, I can see that this is saved in the inbox. I can add tags. I can see when this was created and I can say, okay, this is a test note. And I could say, just checking it out. I can change the fonts, the styles, I can highlight content. I can also add uh, check boxes, numbers, bullets, um, images, pretty much anything that I want to. There's a lot of opportunities to, you know, tweak content. I can add attachments to files, which in the past I've used. Um, so if I have, you know, email attachments or files that I want to include, um, I would attach it to the note. Now that I can't, now that it's much more difficult to share notebooks, I don't use that as much. Um, so what I can say is, you know, I can highlight text here. So I can highlight text. Um, I can take screenshots and uh, snapshots of other stuff if I wanted to. I don't do it as much on the desktop. I can add Google Drive files, so that I liked, um, but it became redundant for my purposes. Um, but then one of the other things that I've started to use Evernote for, so, you know, I can have a test note here, and I can add reminders and a bunch of other stuff, but I'm basically going to shut this down. And I'm going to add one more note here, so I'm going to add a note for an inbox, a note in my inbox, sorry. And if I open it up, I'll say test note two, and I'll say meeting itinerary, uh, meeting notes. So one of the other things that we've used Evernote before a lot in the past, and, and the second way that it became a really great tool, is audio recording. So I would go to a, a department meeting, I'd go to committee meetings, and one of the things that I notice is that I'm sitting there, I have a copy of the itinerary for the meeting, or the agenda for the meeting, and, you know, there was always one other person in the room that was sort of like scribing or, or you know, documenting the, the meeting notes, um, you know, to keep track or running record of what was happening. And the challenge was that the, the office, you know, support person that was writing these notes out, they would generally take notes in the meeting and then they would come back to people that were in the meeting and say, you know, are, is this correct? Did you say that? Is this correct? Did you say that? And then after a while I said, you know, there's a much easier way. Like if we were to use a tool like Evernote, you could create an audio recording of the meeting. So in the end, what we ended up doing was we would have a note for the meeting and in the note for the meeting, we would basically, you know, write out the itinerary or the agenda for the meeting, you know, all of the different points that we wanted to talk about. Um, and then as people would respond and talk, you know, whoever was taking the notes, they would add to the agenda and they would modify the agenda. But at the same time, what we would do is we would basically start audio recording. So the nice thing is that it would create an audio recording of the notes for the meeting, you know, of the meeting. And at the same time, we would have the agenda of the meeting being modified over time. So then this note is a very robust documentation of our meeting. Um, and then you can also add, you know, screen captures, you can add images and stuff like that. So it's a real powerful way to document your meeting. The problem with this is not only on the free version of Evernote are you limited to the two devices, the problem is they limit the amount of like storage and upload download space that you have. So what ultimately ended up happening was if you have a meeting that's an hour long or more, if you have that audio clip for that, that hour meeting, um, that quickly clogs up your Evernote storage space. So that became problematic for us. So we ended up getting a different solution, but the same sort of idea. Um, because we didn't want to pay for that tool. But if you have shorter audio notes, it works really well. Um, and so I can close this out. So now I have three notes in my inbox. 
And as I said before, my process is basically save content to uh, the inbox and then once a week process. So what I would do is once a week I'd come in here and I would take a look at a note. And once a week I would come through and I would read the note and, you know, perhaps highlight things or, you know, comment on things in my note. But then all I'm pretty much doing once a week is I'm looking and saying, okay, did the is the note correct? Like, is it a note or was it just an error? Because one of the challenges is I started to get a lot of errors from the web clipper and other stuff. Um, is it tagged? Is it pretty much what I want? So is it a note? Does it operate? Is it tagged? Um, and then also, do I need to use this note right now? Like, do I need to use it this week? If I don't need to use it this week, if this is just of general interest to me, what I would do is I would move it over to the archive. Come on. So in moving my notes from the inbox to the archive, what I'm generally doing is just getting out of getting getting it out of my mind. I'm not thinking about it anymore. That's very important for me. Um, and, and so for all of these, I can say that here, these are in my inbox. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send these over to my archive. And once again, I want to get stuff out of my inbox and get it into my archive. So I don't need to think about it anymore. Um, so that general process works for me. And the nice thing is that I know that at any point, if I need to, I can go back and I can look in my archive and I can see all of the notes I've taken throughout time. Um, and if I go into my archive, I have, you know, almost 20,000 notes in there. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Nobody needs 20,000 notes. Um, and then what I can also do is I can take a look at all of the content that I have. Um, so I can search through per my archive and see all of the notes that I have. But then the other nice thing is that uh, I can search. So as an example, if I wanted to find that recipe for pepper jelly. So if I want to find that recipe for pepper jelly um, that I know that I saved that one day, I can do a general search and figure out where it went. All right. Don't make me a liar here. I know you're in there. Pepper jam. I know. All right. There. So somewhere in here, I had a note about pepper jelly or pepper jam. Um, and so this is one of the things that I ultimately decided to leave Evernote and move into Google Keep and Google Docs was that I noticed that this, the search wasn't that good. Um, and that this is one of the things that really made me want to leave is that the search wasn't good and it was, it was relatively slow, um, at least compared to what I was getting from Google and Google Docs and, and ultimately Google Keep. It was just really slow. The search wasn't working. Um, I know that there's stuff in there. So, I mean, I have two things tagged jelly here. So that was the challenge is as I, so here I am. Now I finally found the note that I was looking for. Um, and this is annoying to me. Um, I want to be able to quickly say, okay, I know that I have a note in here about jelly. Um, where is it? <laughs> you know, and the, the fact that the search doesn't really work for me is annoying. And so it's one of the reasons why, you know, I started to think about other tools that I could use because primarily I was looking at, um, you know, my use of uh, Google and how quick it was. So maybe I'm spoiled because, you know, Google Drive and and Keep just works so quickly. And, and those tools have this, the power of search that Google gives me. But I just felt like this was annoying that I couldn't find notes. So I would even go into, you know, search for stuff and I would say, okay, I know that I have stuff on, you know, online reading, something that I have 
a lot of stuff about. And so if I tagged it for online reading, good things came up, but it was just really, it was slow, it was sluggish, like it just, it, it didn't really seem to work. I couldn't find my notes, I couldn't find things that I was really trying to hunt down. Um, and so for me, that's just, that's a, a clear sign that my system's not working. Um, another challenge that I had is, you know, if I look at the, the web clipper, so if I'm, I'm basically, you know, saving a note, the web clipper often would get like bogged down, um, and it would, it would stop working. So I'd want to save a full web page and it just wouldn't work. Um, and so for me, once again, um, that was a sign that I, I wanted to get away and try something new. Um, but for the most part, my use of Evernote worked well for me for a long time. Things just started to get really clunky and bogged down, um, and, and the search wasn't working well. But my general process did work. Um, so my process of having two notebooks, you know, having my inbox where everything goes, save content and process it and then send it to the archive when I'm done worked well for me. Um, and what did I use it for? I use it for, you know, saving and bookmarking web pages. Then I started using it for meeting notes and meeting agendas and, and grabbing um, audio content from those. What I also started to use it for is writing. So as I would start a new draft, I would start up a new note and I would title this, you know, um, uh, screen time. And then I would basically just start writing out, you know, start writing my draft for screen time. Uh, you know, and so this would work for me for the most part. But then this is also problematic because a lot of my writing lately is either collaborative. And, you know, because of that, I, I started off in a Google Doc or as I'm writing, I want to be able to send it out to others for review. And once again, a Google Doc. Yes, I can, you know, go in here and I can share this with somebody else and I can add their email and I can share this note. But the the real time editing and the comments and the features and the, the, the way that Google Docs mimics Microsoft Word blows this out of the water for me. You know, this is very simple and basic, um, or at least it should be. Um, but I, you know, I, I initially started using this for writing and I would write drafts out. Um, you know, I, I would write drafts for blog posts here in Evernote and then copy paste it over. But then once again, the problem was that if I was looking for ideas and searching within Evernote, they weren't working. Um, oftentimes I would start up a draft here for a blog post and sort of leave it behind and not go back to it for a while. Um, and then I couldn't search and find those pieces. Um, so after a while, it just got very sluggish and it, and it wasn't, the, the search wasn't working certain parts of Evernote, they didn't work. Um, but it, it, it just became problematic. Um, so the last thing I want to show you here is if I look in my notes, one of the things I did as I was getting ready to make this video is I installed Evernote on my Android device. So now I have it on two devices. I have the desktop Mac version here and my Android device. And so what I did was I installed the, I installed the Evernote app on my Android phone to see how well it would work. And so it's interesting because I, I, one of the challenges I had is most of my reading is generally on my mobile device, my phone, not my tablet. And what my habit is, is I'll, I'll read a post or something on social media and I'll want to save it for use later. And so I'll clip it, you know, I'll, I'll send it to Evernote and it will make a clipping of a page. And so I, I saw this, this post earlier, uh, clipped it using the Evernote app. When I open the Evernote app on my Android phone, the clipping of the, of the web page looks perfect. But then I come to this version that's over here in, in my, you know, in the Evernote app on the Mac and it doesn't work. And so once again, this is just a sign for me that this system doesn't work for me. My process, my process is good, but the, the implementation or the way that it actually unfolds is broken. It doesn't work at all. Um, so 
you know, once again, another sign that these things aren't working for me. Um, so once again, this is Evernote. Uh, Evernote for me was a great tool that fulfilled a lot of my needs and, you know, for a lot of purposes. The nice thing about Evernote, um, and actually one more thing I want to show you, I apologize that I'm jumping around a little bit. Um, but you know, if I look at this note here, so one of the other interesting things that I wanted to, to use was the web clipper. What it would do is it would also grab content from your email. So if I'm in Gmail, I can click this web clipper. And once it boots up, it'll say, okay, do you want the email text saved? Do you want a screenshot of the email? Um, that was a powerful option that I was thinking would be helpful for me. Um, but in the end, that, like all the other web clipper, clipper stuff, um, was broken. Um, so once again, Evernote for me was a great tool. It was a, a good, it was an important part of my work process. Um, the way I set things up, and then I, if you want to check it out, the way I suggest you set it up is, you know, have an inbox and an archive, create notes and content, add it to the inbox, once a week, sit down and, and sort of process the information and your notes and move them over to the archive when they're done. My process was to tag things with as many tags as made sense for me. Um, you know, and then once you tag things, you can move it over to the archive. You can see I have a ton of tags here. Um, you know, I can, I can move things over to the archive after I've processed it. Um, so this, this, this system I have of the inbox and the archive worked for me then the question ultimately comes to the type of notes that you have. I would suggest getting started if you're going to try out Evernote. Get started with install the Web Clipper on Chrome, save bookmarks of pages. You know, you can figure out how you want to save it, you know, what format and what style and what information you want to include. But save the content using Web Clipper. Start to process those notes. Then the next step for me was I used it for meeting notes and agendas and itineraries and stuff like that. Then after that, I started using it for other purposes. I used it for drafting blog posts and, and you know, you know, journal articles and stuff like that. Um, I also used it for Skitch, which I'll talk about later, um, you know, basically creating illustrations. Um, but it was basically a general way to a place to save all of my content over time. The problem is, as I've said multiple times in this video, the problem is I want to be able to save the content, archive it, and, and you know, I might not ever go to that note ever again in my life, but I want to know that it's there. I want to know that it's there. I want to know that I can access it. And at any point I could say, hey, where was that piece of research all about X and pull it up? Or I previously had a bunch of research PDFs in there. Um, you know, and I wanted to say, okay, I know I have research about dispositions. Go into Evernote, search dispositions, and pull up the 30 publications that I know, the PDFs that I have saved in there, all about dispositions. If I do that, nothing happens. Everything bogs down. Um, and so it, the system doesn't work for me. And, and the web version um, is nice. It's clean. Um, but once again, you know, it's not working the way that I want it to. So, I mean, it's still searching, you know, the web, the, the web version is a little bit cleaner, but I feel like it still is uh, as clunky and bogged down as a lot of the other stuff. Um, so that's some of the challenges, this is challenges that I have there. Um, so once again, this is taking a look at Evernote. Um, Evernote was an important part of my process, and now I, I really don't use it um, that often. But my hope is that you, you pay attention to the process involved as opposed to just the tools. Um, you know, I, I, I apologize for getting into a review also of Evernote in this, but as I'm spending more time with it, I'm realizing why I moved away from it. Um, you know, and I, and I just dove in a little bit more than I had planned to about why I don't use Evernote as much. So once again, uh, you know, hopefully that was helpful to you. Um, my name is Ian O'Byrne. Um, if this was helpful to you, please take a look at my website. 
um, where I'll have I, I have a lot of posts about Evernote uh, throughout the years and my use of Evernote. What I also um, have is you know a lot of uh, granular tutorials on how to use Evernote. Um, if this was a little bit too jumpy for you, you can go back and read uh, my uh, love affair with Evernote over the years. Um, and so now what I'm in the process of working on is a general um, overview of my writing process and how I really don't use Evernote anymore. Um, but I'm tweaking a couple things. And I want to make sure that I get this correct. Um, so you can go into my website. You can search for Evernote and see uh, sort of what I use Evernote with and, and how I use it and what works and what doesn't work for me. And as I said, you can go through and see uh, for a long time, you know, how much in love I was with Evernote. And you can see these are back from 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14. Um, so there, there was a lot of times where I spent a lot of time. Uh, there was a lot of times I spent a lot of time, whatever, it's time to end this video, uh, in love with Evernote. Uh, and once again, by all means, if this works for you, uh, please subscribe to my weekly newsletter. I talk about this and then some um, and, and try to make sense of what's happening in education, technology, literacy, and in between. Uh, so once again, thanks a ton. Sorry about the length of the video. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, um, and have a great rest of the day.